welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. It is Nikki T with another week of Come On CFL presented by Come On Now the podcast partnered with Bet99 Sports. Baby, what's going on? Baby, another week of the CFL has passed, baby. And we about to dive into all the topics again. We got last week review. We got the power rankings. We got oh, next old oh, Canada, old oh, Canada player of the week. And we got what we expect to happen next week. Hey, we're going to start off. We're going to go into this week. We're going to get it rolling. We're going to get it popping. We're going to start off with the first game of the week last week. We had Calgary and Ottawa. Ottawa gets the 31-29 win on a comeback game for Jeremiah Masoli. Comes back. Welcome to the league. Over 250 yards throwing the football. Um, oh, Good game back from him, man. Um, They got the running back, Raquel. Armstead, another big week for him, 100 yards. He runs the ball really hard for them. But the story is Jeremiah Mazzoli. After a couple of years of some big-time injuries, um, fighting back, fighting back after getting injured in Hamilton. Then he leaves. He goes to Ottawa. He gets injured by Marino on a nice on a sucker play, going low on the quarterback. We get him get injured again last year, coming back from that injury. He tears his Achilles. That man has went through some things, and it was great to have him back on the field doing what he loved. You could tell that it was a long journey and a long ride back because the tears after that game when he went into his speech about you know his family and all the support he got to, to come back and do it again. It was just a nice story. But Calgary, they lose their first game at home. They have the game in control. They have the win. Pretty much. But, you know, CFL, the game don't end to the game freaking end. And Calgary have a chance. They get the stop on um, Ottawa. They get the turnover on downs in the fourth quarter. They're winning by a couple points, well, by a point. And the offense gets the ball, and you just need one first down to end this game. And Ottawa defense, they rolls up. They stand up. Shout out to B. Miles, Baron Miles defense. They've been playing solid this year. And Ottawa gets another win. Uh. They are looking good. If you didn't know, now you know. They're one of the top teams in the league, the top, the second best team in the East so far. And Jeremiah Mazzoli drives them. After they get the stop, they get the punt. He drives them, gets them in the field goal range. And Ward hits the deep one for 50 yards. Um, I think Calgary you just got up on that play. They need about 10 yards to get in the field goal range the last play on second down, I believe. and. You got to press up. You got it. It's mano a mano. I don't care about the touchdown at this point because they get in field goal range. It's, it's over. And that's what happened. Ward hits the walk-off field goal. They win the game. Calgary gets their first loss at home this year. They dropped the four and six. The second game of the week, we have – um, who was the second game of the week? We have – I want to say – oh, Montreal and Sass. Ooh, big game. Trevor Harris comes back. Ouellette comes back. Um, says they, they got the game, they playing, they driving the ball up and down the field, the whole game. And I'm not going to blame it on Trevor and them for not scoring touchdowns when they get chances to score. When you get chances to score, you post score touchdowns. But besides the point, they get seven field goals. Brett Lawler, Lawler makes three of seven. Yeah, that's a good game for Steph Curry shooting three pointers. But as your field goal kicker, who's kicking field goals, mostly between 35 to 45 yards. You got to knock them down. And you miss four field goals in one game, and then the game comes down to the end. Davis Alexander makes a big play after big play like he's been doing the whole time since taking over for for, uh, Cody. And he pulls out the win. It's a very controversial play again. I don't know what's going on in the CFL at the end of the game, command center. Another another controversial play, um, Davis Alexander, he um, breaks the pocket, get out on the uh, second down, he, he scrambles. At the end of the game, at the 20-yard line, goes to the right of the field, and the linebacker comes instead of forcing him inside to his help. He lets him break containment, get outside of him, but it looked like he stepped out of bounds. But command center, and the view that they showed us, shows he was in bounds. He, it was some green. It was some white in between, the you know, in between him where his foot was. So 
They go to the boot. They say, hey, touchdown. Game over. Montreal wins the game. Trevor Harris has a big game back. That's a good sign for them. He's coming back from the injury. He has a big game. But they, at the end of the day, they don't get the win, which I think they should have. They had the control of the game all game. It comes down to their kicking, not making field goals, and that will happen. Um, Montreal finds another way to win the game. The defense did show a little bit of holes, you know, as Trevor picked them apart. But, shit, they get the win. That's all that matters in this league. Um, so they win that game 27-24. They continue to, continue to roll. They're 9-1. and one. Whew, That's putting themselves in some elite territory. Let's go to the next game of the week. We have Edmonton and Hamilton, 47-22. Hamilton is bad. Hamilton is bad. And Edmonton is they're, – I, I can't talk trash about them right now. They have been playing some good football ever since the trade forward, you know, becoming the starter. I'm not even going to say that because – I'm, I'm going to say that did energize them. They have been playing better. But I'm going to say it also coincides with firing up the head coach and giving – you know, J.J., Jerry Jackson, the responsibility of the head coach position. And it seems like he's turning things around. He's getting the team to believe again, and they should believe. They're right back in the thick of things of the West. They're a game, two games behind a playoff spot. And they still get to play Winnipeg a couple of times this year. Um, they get Calgary, who's ahead of them, you know, in the Labor Day games coming up, back-to-back games. They can make a dent. They can make some changes. Trey Ford come back. That might change some things, but right now, I got to show some love to, to um, McLeod Bethel. He's been playing well since coming in for the injury for Trey Ford. And he looks, you know, he has the team rolling. And I'm going to say they played Hamilton and they got their confidence back against them and their, and what's going on over there. It's just a real destructive team. They don't look well. They were already a young secondary and a young team going around Bo Levi. But now Taylor comes in starting for Bo. He gets hurt. And it's just a whole mess going on over there. And you know what they do? A team that has a mess like that, it can't get worse, right? Ah, it can't get worse. <laughs> it can't get worse. After last game, they fired their defensive coordinator, Mark Washington, and they bring in Chris Jones, <laughs> the guy as a defensive coordinator, the guy who just got fired from Edmonton. They bring him back in. How does that make any sense? It makes zero sense to me, but Hamilton, you know, Ran by Ed Hervey and, you know, his guy, Chris Jones. He brings him back in. The guy who's supposed to be known for defense had one of the worst defense, defenses in the league the past couple years, two, three years. And this is who you bring in as a defensive coordinator. Get some new blood in the CFL. Get some new minds. Get some new people in. He had his chance, chance to chance, and he's been terrible as a defensive coordinator. That's his calling card. And they were terrible. I mean, if you told me that Edmonton hung their hat on defense the past couple of years, I'd be like, okay, that makes that makes sense as bringing him in as a defense coordinator. But they haven't. They've been terrible on defense while he was there. And now you bring him into Hamilton as a defensive coordinator? Yeah, that makes sense. That's how teams get worse, by doing things that don't make sense. And you do it over and over and over again. And now your team is in purgatory. They're, they're bad. Bad, 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 and you make the situation worse. How can you do that? You bring in Chris Jones. They did it. <laughs> Good old Hamilton. All right. On to the next game. That game was a blowout. Um, Big game by their backup running back, Justin Rankins. Big game by the defense. Um, Bo Levi comes early, struggles. Whatever. He's probably checked out now with the whole situation going over there. I, I don't blame him, but he got to do what's best for his career. Got to keep playing strong. Got to keep going out there every week, trying to motivate his guys. But they don't really want him as a quarterback anyway. So it's tough when somebody don't want you and they need you. Like, well, you didn't want me. <laughs> I'll come out here and do what for you? Whatever. On to the next game. Game of the week because Nathan Rourke is back. And he comes back against Winnipeg, a team that he's notoriously struggled against in his career. But this is the first game he's back. You get a couple days of practice. Bam, you're the starter. Well, look at that defense. That defense is rolling, and they did a number on Nathan Rourke. In a 20-11 to 11 win by, by Winnipeg, and Nathan Rourke put up three points of that. He was out for the last struggle points that they got it into the game. That really didn't matter. The game was over. Winnipeg was in control of it all game. Nathan Rourke goes 8 for 25. Now, 8, 25, eight for 25, if he played for the Toronto Blue Jays and he was the 
the cleanup hitter. That's not bad. That's um a three ten bad percentage. I'll take it. But as a starting quarterback in the CFL, no bueno. Not so good. So he has a tough week back, but it's understandable. The guy's getting his feet back wet. He hasn't played in a while. And now he becomes he comes back. He's thrown right into the fire against the hottest defense in the league. And he throws two interceptions. And Winnipeg was ready for them the whole game. I'm I'm not gonna, you know, go into major details, but I know that their piss was hot all week. <laughs> they were ready for this game. They wanted to put a, they wanted to make a statement. And they are not afraid of BC or whatever they got going on. They think as B they think of BC as their little brothers that they can no matter what, no matter what the records say, that we are better than you. And that's just how Winnipeg feels about BC. Maybe it's the matchups, maybe it's the coaching. You know, one coach against the other, one coach just have the, the other coach number, and that's what it seems like in this matchup. No matter what the record is, no matter what's going on, no matter who's coming back, who's your receiver, how good they've been doing all year, Winnipeg feels very confident against that team, and they showed it. Zach Caleros has another strong game. He throws one interception when they could have put the game in get way a little easy. But, you know, overall, Brady runs the ball hard. Don't get that much carries, but they just control the game. Top to bottom, the line of scrimmage, the secondary, the back end, special team. Winnipeg just did that. Just a better team. Got their hands on a lot of balls. Pause. The defense did. But they 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 caught as much balls as uh almost as much balls as uh BC receivers. <laughs> so tough game for them. Welcome back, Nate the Rort, to the league. You should have a better week coming up against, you know, a team that doesn't fare you as much the upcoming week. So you should get back on the road. We should see, you know, a lot of di a big difference from him going on the road against Ottawa. Got some holes there you can kind of exploit. I will expect him to be better with a couple more practices with his receivers. Should be a lot better this week. But not last week. They ruined his welcome game back. Welcome back. And he gets smacked <laughs> by Winnipeg. So Winnipeg is back rolling. They're feeling good about themselves. They feel better than their 4-6 and six record. And now the West Division has got interesting. <laughs> Everybody's in striking distance. It's not over. And early in the year, it was a runaway. We were like, oh, BC and SAS, they got it. They're in control of it. They'll be fighting for the number one seed, but not so fast. Not so fast. Everybody's in the hunt. Even Edmonton is back in the hunt. <laughs> They're a couple games behind. Who would have thought this team started off 0-7? 0-6. Terrible. Fire the coach. And now they're back and they're rolling. That's what I have for last week's games. Um, right now we're going to go into the power rankings. We're going to keep it short to the point and quick. At number nine we have Hamilton. Speaks for itself. At number eight, the Calgary Stampeders. They're falling into a little bit of a slide. They have to be more consistent they lose the game at home where they had a chance to win it against a good team. So I'm, I don't want to penalize them too much, but Edmonton is playing better. They're rolling. They have been winning their games lately, and they are looking good, and they're right back in the thick of things. And I, this is a power rank. It's not what you've done all, you know, the beginning of the year. It's about what you – are you hot lately? They're getting hot. That's why Edmonton is number seven. I have Edmonton at number seven. We have BC at number six. They're struggling. It's looking bad. But I expect them to get better as time goes on. At number five, we have Toronto. At number four, we have Winnipeg. At number three, I'll keep it with SAS. And number two, Ottawa. And the reigning champs, they stay at one. Can't argue with that list right there. And that's Nick Power Rankers for this week. All right. And what we're going to dive into next will be next week's games. <sighs> hey, this is what I'm doing. Hey, if you're going to bet, do it at your own risk. But this is my, what I'm rolling with this week. This week, let's let's go to um and see the numbers on it. I had it. I like looking at it. I looked at it earlier. I, I know what I like, but I want to make sure and keep it, you know, keep it going how we should. This week, 
we're going to start off with um, Thursday game. And it's the first game of the week. We got Sask at Toronto. Chad Kelly is back. Chad Kelly is back, guys. Reinstated by the CFL. He's saying he's a changed man. He's doing better. He's going to make sure he shows the league that his character is better. He's not going to get in trouble again. But he hasn't played all year this year. And the last time we seen him, it wasn't good. Montreal tore him apart. So it's either he's going to come back real fiery, ready to go. He's been sitting out for a while. Or he's going to come back and look like Nathan Rourke. And I'm expecting the latter to look more like Nathan Rourke than he did for most of the MOP season. Just because he's been off for so long, hasn't really got time to practice like he's like he would want to with his players. Um, different receiver core a little bit, slight change. But we're gonna go with um I like Sass and I like the two plus two point five. Trevor played well. I expect him to go on the road this game and handle business against Toronto. Winnipeg gets a bye week, they play Hamilton. Minus nine point five. I'm taking Winnipeg to cover that. Um it's a bye week, whatever. Chris Jones is there. <laughs> whew, Lord. Um, whew, Lord. Okay. Uh, we're going to go up. And then we got the BC and Ottawa game on Saturday. Whew. Nathan Roy gets his win. He wins this week. He comes back. He got a little bit of time to practice with his guys. I expect them to look a lot better to get the players back. Roland Holland's been struggling out there at receiver. A lot of drops. I expect him to find his... uh. His foot and back with Rourke. I expect McKinnis to find his, um, to get back open like he was at the beginning of the year. Um, I don't, the teams have figured him out, but I think with Rourke, he'll open up another dimension for them, at least for right now. And I think Hatcher gets it, gets it back going for them. So I like them against Ottawa. I know Ottawa's like, Nick, you never pick us. Well, keep doing what y'all do. Keep, keep proving me wrong. But I like BC this week to, to win this game. I like them minus one. BC, I'm picking them this week. Um, the last game of the week, big one, Edmonton versus Montreal. Cody freaking Fajardo is back. Alexander played well. He held the fort down. Like I said, you need your starting, you need your backup quarterback in this league to be good, to hold the fort down when you need him to, because this 18-game season is brutal. Your quarterback is probably going to get hurt. And it's been going around the whole league for the most part, except for Calgary's quarterback, Jake. Jake's just the most non-getting hurt quarterback in the league. But besides that, pretty much every other team, your quarterback get hurt, your backup got to step up, and Alexander did that. But they play Edmonton this week. I like Montreal to cover minus six. They, they've been well. I, I expect them to go back home, get the crowd into it, get a couple early, early turnovers against them. Trey Ford don't look like he's playing again. So I'm going with Montreal. That's what we got for Nick Pick, man. Go out there, bet 99, use the code. It's down there. Use the code. It benefits you. Why not? Free money, baby. Do what you got to do. All right. Uh, as we wrap up this week, we're going to go to Nick's O Canada, Canada Player of the Week. Um, This might be the first time this happened in the longest time in history of history of history. We're going to rock with two Edmonton players. They've been balling. I'm going to give them a shout-out. They've been doing their thing since the coach changed, since Trey Ford got in there, and they're rolling, and they're back in the things, thick of things in the West. I just said that earlier. So I'm going to give a shout-out to their players. Player of the week is going to go to none other than their backup running back, Justin Rankins, had a monster week, 17, carries over 100 yards. Not one, not two, but three touchdowns. Couldn't stop him, couldn't deny him from getting in the end zone running people over, doing whatever he wants, scoring, <laughs> balling. Um, the defensive player of the week, we're going to stick with Edmonton. Cordell Jackson, DB, gets an interception, returns it for 29 yards, gets another fumble recovery, a couple of tackles. Edmonton is playing defense. Who would have thought? They're making moves. Shout out Edmonton Elks. Let's see how y'all can keep this season going. I'm rooting for y'all guys. I used to play there. I like the city. I like going to Jasper Street. I like going to Cactus Club. That's my spot. Get me a man leany, and I am happy. But I'm rooting for y'all, Edmonton. I like the change. I like the turnaround. And all it took was a change of a coach, change of a quarterback. And now, y'all are rolling. 
Good job for y'all. Shout out to Edmonton. Keep it going. That's what we got for this week of Come On CFL. Rocking with Nikki T. Like I said, it is presented by Come On Now, the podcast. And it's partnered with Bet99. That's what we got for this week's episode, y'all. Tune in, man. We got great shows going on. I'm bringing on different people. Uh, we're going to have a couple of guests on in the upcoming weeks. So keep supporting. Hit that follow button. I mean, hit that subscribe button, that bell down here, and comment. I like to go back and forth with all my Canadians, even my Americans that's tuned into this game. Let's talk about what's going on in the league, baby. I love it. That's all I got for this week of Come On CFL. See y'all next week on week nine. I'm going for it on my picks this week. I'm feeling good. Have a good one.